Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create bokeh backgrounds in Illustrator. Before we get started on this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the effect that we're going to achieve of a sort of heart-shaped bokeh pattern in Illustrator. Now you could use a heart or you could use stars or circles or rounded rectangles. It doesn't matter what shape you use. It's the basic process that's going to be of interest to you. To get started with this technique, I'm going to create a brand new document. I'm going to choose File New. I'm just going to use a 1000 by 1000 pixel document and making sure that the color mode here in the advanced area is set to RGB and click OK. Now I'm going to create a rectangle the size of the artboard. I could click on the rectangle tool and draw it myself, but I'm going to use a script because I prefer to use a script to do that. If you want to learn more about scripting in Illustrator, then I suggest that you look at my video on scripting and I'll show you where to find and download good scripts, how to install them and how to use them in Illustrator. So here is my rectangle now, the size of the artboard. What I want to do is to lock this. I'm just going to close this layer. That will mean that when I'm selecting on the artboard in a minute, I'm not going to select my background by mistake and start moving it around. I'll click the Create New Layer icon. I'm going to start on this layer to draw out my shape. Now, as I said, you could use any shape you like. So you could choose a rounded rectangle, an ellipse, or a circle, or a polygon, or a star. I'm going to make a heart. So I'm just clicking on the pen tool, very quickly drawing out a heart shape. I'm dragging up, or clicking and dragging up, and then finding a spot here opposite my starting point, click and drag down. I'm holding the Shift key as I do that so that I'm dragging directly up and directly down. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to find the point here that's directly below my starting point and click to finish my heart off. Now I'm just going to control click away from it to deselect that drawing mode. I'm going to just select over my artboard and this is my shape. So I'm going to fill it with a pink color. I have a pink color here in a cooler color scheme. I'm just going to press Control 0 to square this all up again. I'm working with the selection tool. So I've got my filled half heart shape with no stroke. Now I want to copy and flip this. And the command to do that is Object Transform Reflect. I've got this set to vertical. I've got preview turned on. You can see that it's going to be flipped over. So I just want to click copy because that gives me my second copy of my heart. So I'm going to just drag my second copy and line it up with the first. I want to join these together. I could use object path join, but I don't always get really good results with that. So I use a script instead file scripts, and I have a script called join reasonably. I'm just going to run that. Now that means now I have a single shape where previously I had two. And I could go ahead and adjust this if I want to. I'm actually going to make it a bit smaller because as a starting point for my bokeh background, I want it to be about the size of an average heart that I'm going to be working with. I use the zoom tool and just get in so that I can see the heart very clearly on the screen, but it is the size that I want it to be. So I'm using the appearance panel here because I'm going to make some changes to the heart. Well, what I'm going to do is add an inner glow inside it. So with the shape selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Stylize, and then Inner Glow. It's important to get to say this up close because you want to see exactly where your glow is going. I'm going to click Preview on. You can see that I've got a really hefty glow there left over from something else I was working in, I think. So I'm just going to reduce the blur. So I want to push it out to more the edges of the heart. And I can adjust the opacity if I want to. So if I want a little bit more opaque, I can make it more opaque. I'm setting the blend mode to screen because that will lighten it. You can see it's the same pink color as the heart. But when we use the screen blend mode, the inner glow is a sort of lightning effect. If you wanted this to be darker, just select the multiply effect and then you'll get a darker glow. Just because it's called inner glow doesn't mean it can't be darker. It's really all about the blend mode that you're using. So this is a pretty good starting point for me. So I'm just going to click OK. 
move the appearance panel out of the way. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to press Control or Command Zero just to size everything back up so I can see my heart, sort of pretty much how it's going to look. Now, if you want to test this at this point, I suggest that you hold the Alt or Option key as you drag a couple of hearts away from each other. And I've just seen something I've forgotten to do. So it's a good thing that we did just this. I'm just going to select over my hearts. What I want to do is to change the opacity of the heart. So I'm just going to click on Opacity and I'm going to dial down the opacity just a little bit to about 80%. And I'm also going to set the Blend Mode here to Screen. So they're going to lighten up as they overlap. And really what we're looking for here is how they're going to look as a starting point. So actually I'm thinking Opacity may be up as high as 91%, but Screen Blend Mode so that they're interacting in that way. Okay, so now I've satisfied myself that this is going to work. I'm going to get rid of two of these hearts because I just want one as a starting point. So with it selected, I'm going to make a symbol out of it. So I'll choose Window and then Symbols. doesn't matter too much what's in your Symbols palette at this stage. All you need to do right now is to pick up this heart and just drop it in the Symbols palette. Ignore this dialog, just click OK because you don't need to worry about any of that. I'm just going to move my heart out of the way. I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to turn its visibility off because essentially now that it's a symbol, I don't really need it at all. So I'm just going to click Create New Layer so that all of my symbol work goes on a brand new layer. With my symbol selected, I'm going to click here on the Symbol Sprayer tool. And this is going to let me spray my symbol. If you want to see the settings for your Symbol Sprayer tool, just double click on the tool. You can see that the diameter of the brush is 200 pixels. The intensity is 8, and that's a pretty good intensity for spraying the thing on. And the set density is 5. I'm just going to leave that set as it is right now. And now I'm going to start spraying my symbols. So what I want to do is get a pretty good coverage of my document, pretty good range of symbols in there. Now I'm not worried that I'm going slightly over the edges. I don't want to go too far over the edges, but slightly will be fine because I can just scale this down in a minute. So there's my starting point for my symbols. Let's go now to the Symbol Sizer tool because this allows us to add some variety in our symbol size. By just clicking on a symbol, I'm just clicking, although I could just brush it over if I wanted to, I can make some of these hearts a larger size. This is why I started with a size that would be sort of the average size so I could make some of them a bit bigger. If I hold the Alt key or the Option key as I click on a shape, then it's going to become smaller. So again, I'm going to vary these a little bit, making some bigger and some smaller. If you find that when you're trying to size these heart shapes that too many of them are being sized at the one time, double click on the symbol size at all and just bring your brush size down a little bit. Now it's going to be easier for me to target the exact heart that I want to resize. Once you've finished doing your resizing, you can have a look at some of the other tools. For example, the Spinner tool lets you adjust the rotation of a shape. Drag in one direction and you'll see that there's a little arrow that tells you the rotation that that shape's going to take on. So you can drag slightly to the left or slightly to the right. Now I could drag a whole heap to the left or right, but I don't want that to happen to these hearts. I just want a little bit of a rotation, just enough to give a sense of movement to this background. There's also a symbol shifter tool. You can use this to move your symbols around. Just drag on a symbol and you can move it. Now I think that after having sized these symbols a little bit that they're going to need some movement. So I'm just going to go back to the symbol shifter tool and just move them around a little bit more. I 
Another one of the symbol tools that you have is the symbol screener tool. Now one of the reasons why I increased the symbol opacity just up to 90% was to give it some opacity, but the stainer tool lets me reduce the opacity. Now this is way too much of an effect, so I'm just going to double click on the tool and reset the intensity down to 3. Now when I click on one of these hearts, you can see that they're becoming more transparent. If I want them back to the way they were, I'm going to Alt click on them. But you want a fairly good starting point for your hearts because you won't be able to bring them up any more intense than they started off being. So you definitely will want a good starting point and just trust on this tool being a way to reduce the intensity a little bit. So just want a bit, again, a bit more variety throughout this background for the actual intensity of the effect. The symbol stainer tool here, let's just go and grab it, the stainer tool, lets me go ahead and stain these with some colour. So I'm just going to choose a slightly orange colour and just brush over some of these shapes with it and you can see that they're becoming a little more orange than pink. Let's go and get a pale blue. And using the symbol stainer, I can add a little bit of colour into the background. Well, I can add a lot of colour if I want to. I'm just being a little bit careful about the colours that I choose and choosing more sort of pastel colours. But you can choose whatever colours you like and just paint on the shapes using the symbol stainer at all. Once I'm done with this, I'm just going to select the selection tool. I'm just going to find the corner of my shape and hold the shift key as I drag on it. I want to bring in the edges so that the shape or the, all the symbol set actually fits within my background. And if I hold the shift key as I do that, I'm going to make sure that I bring the shapes in in proportion so they're not going to be distorted as I work. And if I'm happy with that, I can lock this down if I want to put something on top of it, for example. So there's a way of creating a sort of bokeh heart background in Illustrator, creating your shape, adding it as a symbol, and then using the symbol tools to create that sort of background effect. Here's the original one we looked at. Now I had a lot different setting for opacity on this one. I think I probably started with an opacity of about 50%, so it's a lot more transparent. And here's a dark bokeh that has a darkened edge. To create this, instead of using the inner glow with a screen edge, you'd use the inner glow with a multiply edge. So it's same colour, but just use multiply to darken it, and then you're getting that darkening effect. Again, I started off with a very low opacity, probably around about 45 or 50 percent on this one. I would have got a much brighter effect had I started with, say, 90 percent opacity. But there's heaps of variety there for you to work at in creating these bokeh backgrounds yourself. And of course, heart shape is just one of the shapes you can use. You could use squares, circles, rectangles, stars, whatever you like. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.